Coolio, Coolio, what's Coolio. Up? What's up? What's is up? The GoPro Let me on? hear. Yes, the GoPro is on. Uh, can I get a mic she check from scoop you? Up. Scoop up. Scoop yeah, up. can you scoop up? <laughs> so you hear? I hear. You check, hear me, check, right? One, two, three. Check, check. See how you sound? You sound beautiful. I sound great. You sound, I sound fucking fantastic. amazing. And you can cuss too, just so you know. Okay, thank you very Sweet much. Appreciate it. Since this will put you in character. Motherfucker, motherfucker. No. <laughs> Everyone has a unique gift. And Mike and Diana, host of the One Life podcast, believe that most people don't know how to use their gifts or what they are. Mike and Diana want you to see things from a different perspective and be true to yourself. The, hat, the One Life podcast unites the world like through art, like fashion, right music, and film. It inspires, motivates, and creates positive energy, love, and compassion to all communities and creates an equal playing field for all. On the One Life podcast, they cover topics like building relationships, overcoming adversity, habits of healthy people, and much, much more. We only have one life to live. Be yourself and live your truth. Add the One Life podcast to your playlist that's the number one in e life available on spotify amazon music apple podcast and your favorite podcast platform what up y'all welcome to the one life podcast i am your boy mike reed into the eye to the c and as always i have my lovely co-host diana from sociaholic we in the building you guys and we have the incredible the beautiful the lovely talented latifa abdul in the building with us you guys and we're going to head to the top floor and talk about some things um you know what today's just been a day and i, I don't even know what today Something is the moon the stars the ocean then a line i don't know i don't know but you know but first before we get into that we're gonna see what's going on in the av right now what's going on diana in the that's av right that's right so well every wednesday but tonight is today's wednesday so we have karaoke at zelda's um one of my favorite spots to go with yeah. miss beautiful latifa she is the kj at zelda's so it oh, is yeah. at zelda's 750 west lancaster boulevard it's from 7 p.m until 11 yeah. until you feel good right you yeah, know, yeah. Like that. all right love it love it love it so and then this saturday july 23rd from 5 to 7 is the fourth saturday car cruise at the vaughn shopping center off 30th Street West in Rancho Vista. It's right there by, there's like El Poloco and the AR Workshop. So it's a classic car, hot rod, low rider, antique car, rat rod, muscle car, exotic cars, motorcycles, and Bob FM AV will be there. So woo woo, shout out to Bob FM. And then we did tell you guys about the Latin American Food Festival coming up July 30th. Yes. Don't want to miss that. Um, it's from 6 to 11 at the AV Fairgrounds in the Hunter Pavilion. I do know that the Emerald Valley Hispanic Chamber is going to be giving away free tickets. Mm -hmm. Tickets to get food. It's $50 if you don't get a free ticket and you get to travel the world. Uh, one food at a plate at a time. I don't know. There's about, I don't know, there's seating for 400 people. I saw the floor plan for this event. It's going to be huge. So you don't want to miss it. So oh. do I get a free ticket since I'm like... You got to enter. Oh. I'm not I thought saying. because we know, just, because we just like shouting them out. And I know. I'm just kidding. We'll talk. Andreas. <sighs> yeah. Andreas, we can talk. talk to you. you know, we always shout out Rio and... Last but not yeah. least is the <laughs> wedding and event showcase at Zelda's, and that is happening July 26th from 6 to 9. So if you are planning your wedding or planning an event and you still are looking for a, a venue or a place to hold your rehearsal dinner or if you've got a birthday coming up, come check us out. We're going to have vendors there. I'll be there. Um, we're just going to be showcasing the Zelda's like a venue. And we have live jazz, and it's going to be amazing. So come check out. There is a link to RSVP uh, at Eventually Events. Cool. Hey, and, and again, if you guys haven't been at Zelda's yet, I mean, they've been having a lot of great events over there. Um, like I said, tonight, karaoke with the beautiful, the beautiful, the beautiful, the beautiful Latifa right in the building. And we're going to get she to her in a minute. She sings, too, y'all. So oh, yeah, she has an duet, amazing voice. Collab. Yeah. Although we've never collabed, but it's okay. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know. I, I always give you your lane because I know you come. I, like to, I just carve out a lane. I'm like, let you get in that lane. And um, so, what's up? What's up, Latifa? How you doing? Thank you for joining us today. What's up? How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm amazing. Girl. I'm doing great. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting me on this podcast. I Sorry for it. the uh, late delay. It's been a day. I don't know what it is. Okay. Actually, I think it worked out. Great. I'm glad it wasn't just me because at first I thought, oh my god. I know because I was about to. Uh, I was about, about to talk to about you. I, I was, I was, because you was late. And then you forgot and something. And then I forgot something. I had to go all the way home. <laughs> and he had to take it back. 
<laughs> then I came back, and then she had me standing outside because, uh, for y'all that don't know, Diane and I have an office space in a, in a building over here that has is security, and they ain't got me my key yet, and that's a whole nother podcast, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. talk about the city, but <laughs> it's all good. It's all y'all good. get Miss Key, please. City. It's all good. Um, I, I love, have no I, problem hey. with y'all. I'm good. I got my key. Hey. So. I love the city. I love the AV. I love shout out to uh, Lancaster Palmdale. Um, but anyway, the point is you left me outside because I had to call Diana and say, hey, I'm here. And she's like, I'll call you back. And I'm like, it's 98 degrees. What's she talking about? She's going to call me back. I'm outside. <laughs> yep. out here. You know, but I it's all good. Fires um, I'm putting out, y'all. So. No, it's been one of those days. Uh-huh. So, so, um. What's up, Latima? What's up? What's cracking with you? How you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm doing so you just did well. a, a, I can't a hear you casting. Though. I know she got to sit up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to sit a little closer. Need a pillow? Don't worry. You need a pillow? Yeah, I love that pillow. I'm gonna grab me one of those beautiful pillows. That's what I told you earlier. I know, but I, I need. You're gonna it. learn to listen to me. It's all good. Oh okay. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Let's talk about let's talk about that subject. No, just kidding. <laughs> that go, went a little deeper, didn't it? Okay, so tonight we got we got karaoke from seven to eleven. So it's like I start off the night with some music, just try to get the vibe mm-hmm. going up, and then I let whoever sings want to sing. But you know, I always deal with the singers who who always get too super shy without alcohol. Or something like that, and uh, that that kind of trips me out because I'm like, you know, it's time get your little pre drinks on when you come, come ready get your to, to sing. Courage up in there. But it's all good because it gives me a chance to play with the music a little bit mm-hmm. and set the tone. So, so what did you just do today? Um, today I'm auditioning. So I'm I'm an actress. I'm a singer. I host KJ. Um, I'm really trying to just do as much as I can with my voice. That's really what I want to do. With your um, voice? With my voice. Um, I do a lot with my hands. So I paint. I, I'm a fine artist and stuff like that. So I just figure, just do everything creative that I really want to do. I love but it. for now, um, acting is like kicked up. I've got. I didn't know on, you painted. Yes, I paint. Like I paint a lot, and I kind of shy about it. You know? Do you have anything that you can show us after? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I got plenty of stuff. Like, I actually had some of my stuff um, displayed in some of these businesses here over the years. And then Are you I w- serious? Yeah, I did. I did, because I was just trying to venture out with... Um, so what kind of painting did you do? Like, landscape or um, portrait? It's really whatever comes to me. And so um, I'm a self-taught artist. And so whatever I see something, I just go with it and then oh, teach myself shit. how to do it and just do it. But it's already in my system. Singing, music... Art is Artists, already on my yeah, system. Art, yes. um, my family has always had their mm-hmm. fingers dabbling and stuff. Like I like building things. I like I just like being creative. I so love it. the voice and all that it all like to me encompasses um, the same area, mm-hmm. which is just to be creative as much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. So um, so let's let's rewind for a second because I didn't know I didn't know you as a painter either. Learned so you're an actress, painter. You also Singer. make your own perfume um no i'm a no? perfume collector perfume collector yeah but i layer it I, so i call those layers my own thing, you know? <laughs> she's like i take a little bit of this and a little bit of right that. so that's creating like your own scent oh that's definitely one of my dreams that's definitely one of the okay, to, so to create my scent. own uh, perfumes yeah like right. that's like my whole other thing like i'm obsessed with it's a there's this book called um Perfume. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's mm-hmm. about this young man who has a supersonic version of his senses are so bright that he can smell anything and everything and like identify it down to like a science. So, you can get paid uh, big for that, by the way. Uh, my nose is like so keen, like my hearing and mm-hmm. my, 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 my sense of smell is so keen. So mm-hmm. sometimes it gets me in trouble. I can smell everything like, you know, mm-hmm. and be like, what is that? What did you bring in the house? Like I could smell food and I, I'm just really, mm-hmm. um, that's crazy. People out. I was just having a conversation with someone last night about that. Um, my nose is horrible. Like I don't like when people be like, Oh, well, we did you smell it. that? Yeah. Cause and I have like, a heightened sense of smell and vision. So like I, I can see stuff. Shit. And hear stuff, and oh, people I can hear. Are, but I like I tune out when I want to. So yeah. like people are like, oh, all of a sudden you can. I'm like, oh yeah, I can hear when I want to hear. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 elective hearing. That's what Selective that's called. Hearing, I can <laughs> smell, and like things will be like two years old. I'm like, somebody pissed here. Some and dog, right and it's right there yeah. specifically. I'll no. My- <laughs> so yeah, let's rewind. So I want to know about Latifa. Like, where did the name come from? Oh yeah. Um, where did you grow up? You know, how'd you get into, you know, the things you're getting into, actressing, actressing, is that a word? Actressing, I know. That's not a word. It's the verb version I'm, of it, I'm, I think. I'm going to delete it's that. Acting. So. <laughs> 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 Being an actress. Um, 
Um, well, my family, I, I was born in California, but I was raised in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So New Orleans, like right across from there. My stepfather was a merchant. He made his own stuff. Um, he made his own jewelry, his own scents, and we sold, you know, incense and all that stuff in the French mm -hmm. Quarter. So like, when everybody so that's where that came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like I remember being the little kid that barely above the booth had to set up things and just being like, you know, my hands touching every little that's scent. So cool. um, matter of fact, they started newer incense. And if you ever see that brand, that's that was um, my stepfather and, um, and his partner and my mom and stuff. So with that, I just was always into that. But finding my own lane, that really came more of like dealing with my aunt who had a group called the Laws Army. And so, you know, we had to dance. We were wearing fatigues before fatigue wearing was, was really cool. What's fatigue? You know, the camouflage? The fatigue, the green ar army you stuff. No, camouflage. Oh, you know how people wear camo for yeah. fashion? Uh, I remember that being like. Serious? Yes, I learned something new every day. <laughs> I remember being like so embarrassed because that was that was only for military uh -huh. or something like that. And then I remember my aunt making that fashion out of it. And then now I look at it, it's like it's a, staple. It, yeah. it's a staple. I remember her getting the first desert storm uh, mm -hmm. uh, fatigues when that was out. Okay. So anyhow, I made to myself with that desert uh, storm uh, comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Never, you're beautiful. <laughs> you know, but, but moving on, I'm just saying that um, I, I always had those influences of fashion, of, of setting trends that I didn't even know we were even breaking trends. And then then I realized when I was doing the math, I'm like, you've always been in entertainment. I'm good at other stuff. I'm great at other stuff. You know, like paperwork. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember registering cars and doing all kind of stuff with papers and um, real estate and just reading and just being proficient in that. But I've always came back to creativity. Man. And, and, and I was like, you know, what are you going to do with your life? Are you, is this what you're going to do? Because this almost felt like a fad in a way. Mm -hmm. But then you realize when you start calculating what you actually spend more time doing, this is what I've actually spent more time in my life doing is in in the entertainment industry, whatever facet that was. And um, so now I've accepted it. I'm like, all right, this is what you're doing. And and I'm not even going to be mad at myself or, you know, um, neglect what I really desire now. Because I feel like time mm -hmm. is like really not promised to us. Right. To do what you love and, and you're passionate. I about. mean, who else is going to do it if I don't do it? You know, mm -hmm. and am I waiting for a certain day for that to take off? Well, and you know, and that's so that's the topic that we're actually going to talk about. Um, the dream is free and the hustle is sold separately. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's I your feel topic. like I know because I feel like we all have dreams. We're all hustling to meet those dreams. And I don't feel like anyone, at least that I know of, that is ambitious has really said okay i made i've i've already accomplished my dream i'm done we're never done mm -hmm. it's like once you read a, it's like a level and then you're like okay next level next level so that's kind of what i want to I, I feel like you have you embody the the deficient of a hustler because i always see you out you're always moving doing something wow that's that's i mean it's like an accumulation of of your effort starting to show mm -hmm. itself because man i a lot of times people say why are you so confident or how are you and i'm 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 like you don't realize what i have to the self-talk that i have to constantly mm. do to keep myself in it and even i can't even see that far ahead i can only kind of see right in front of me but right. uh, but living with that sense of um it, it's gonna work out and, and yeah. trying to program myself to that it's already happened oh my gosh it, it gets a little deep right there manifestation but it's a lot of mind talk a lot of um support from outside sources like i actually went to a hypnotist we probably, <laughs> probably not you got that. hypnotized i actually went to a hypnotist because i was on my life's journey and i'm like i'm gonna start spending money on doing things that help to nurture me and feed me like i went to a therapist and i see i see a therapist on a regular basis that's and good i do recommend that though no. a therapist i think everybody needs therapy at least once a week or at least once a month. Hey, yeah. I was just telling my therapist friend that I think that needs to be like a law. Staple, when you yeah. turn 18, you need to at least go through one session of therapy. One. I mean, a just year, to kind of like. Year, at least a year. Let's fix all that childhood <laughs> yeah. trauma before you go out in the real world. No, for real. Like, like literally, because I could have done it. But it's a cultural mm -hmm. thing, though. I think it's, it's turned off by a cultural thing. Mm. Yeah, but now you have celebrities like just happily admitting, I'm getting therapy. And everyone's like, I want to no, get yeah. therapy now. That's a great Should thing. have been a thing, but uh, not that. I mean, I well, I mean, I figured I'm going to do all of this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I I got a standing appointment with the massage therapist. I still haven't went to yet. I so I feel like it's a combination of all things. But I want to hear about you being hypnotized. Like, do they have to like? Did you have to bark like a dog or anything? No. <laughs> stupid. Why does everybody always go there when they talk about hypnotists? Well, bark I mean, like a dog. <laughs> I've heard that. That's what I've heard. That's the impression I got. Okay. So what was the goal? The goal was to. I, I already knew that I was having issues with my self talk. 
and with the things that would negatively kind of like the back of the words. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out where those words were coming from. And so what I figured out was that those words were coming from a childhood experience at the end of the day. And those words were like, they're like not at you. They might say things like, oh, you're not going to be this or, you know, just self-doubt, ah, you know. And why would you even, you know, those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. And they were so negative that I was like, all right, so how do I communicate with the inner self? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Like, I've heard about hypnotism, but that's just one way. Like, I guess, you know, you can, you can, you can write down things. You can write mm -hmm. down your mantras. You can try to do affirmations. You can go to different mm -hmm. links, but I still feel like that voice is pretty damn loud mm -hmm. in the back of my head and fighting through it. I was like, it must be something what they're talking about with the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you find a way to talk to your subconscious? It's dangerous though. Oh yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, who are you going to put yourself in their mm -hmm. hands, right? right. Mm -hmm. So um, I just said, well, this is going to be another thing, another tool that I'm going to use. So I reached out to somebody local, as a matter of fact, here in Lancaster, and um, I told him what my goals were. So my goals were to communicate with my inner child. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he pulled out, which is you don't check out in your brain. It's not like a thing where you're like, you're, you're layered and you no longer see Latifa or Diane. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, you are you. Mm -hmm. But the certain... Uh, uh, words that you can say to your to your child, which is thank you. You did a great yeah. job. You did a great job of what you were dealing with. I appreciate you. You know what's well, being um, the parent that you didn't have oh, to man. yourself. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, but your services are no longer needed. Wow. So I was kind of like, mm -hmm. even if I I kept on having a lot of interruptions in my family. People kept mm -hmm. on walking in. I was like, come on, I'm getting hypnotized here. <laughs> it's, causing you, it's causing me an arm and a grip. Like, get out. And then I realized that what he was talking to me about was um, surface, but it was internal. Thank you, little kid. Thank you, little Latifa, mm -hmm. who, who was constantly paying attention to the gas tank before we ran out of gas in the country. <laughs> There's no way to get rescued. You know, because I was that hyper vigilant kid. Like, Mom, you need to put gas in the car. And Mom, yeah. I don't think we should do this. And Mom, you know, I was very aware and keen mm -hmm. of danger. Mm -hmm. And so that person is always on deck. Like, danger, 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 danger. So that was the hypnosis. So you really dug, dug into that self journey because I've been reading about that too and how to be confident and be positive, mind, you know, in your mindset as you grow and, and, and how to make that child, the inner child feel secure so that they, your insecurities don't come out. And that's just such a great, I love how you, you handled it. With I'm biting that. my jaw, as I said, because it kind of makes me a little nervous. Just a little bit. Just a little it's nervous. exposed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, but it feels good getting it off it, your chest like that. I feel like my story better help somebody else. Not but, should or want to. No, it, it better. better. No, it better. It, it, we better hear it. No, it, <laughs> no, it will. It, it, it helps you. No, it and better. it will. Because it absolutely to go will. through all this, it has to it be will. for a reason other than to torment a person. You know, it has to be to, to help. But now, I think we all have that inner child. I'm sorry, interrupting you. No, go ahead. I think we all have that inner child and a lot of it stems, like I said before, childhood trauma. And it, it may not be, you know, abuse. Um, I mean, that, that might not be it. It might just be the negative talk. Like, you know, someone saying, you're not good at that or don't do that. Or, you know, you're such a bad kid. Sometimes like, those kind of things mm -hmm. the words can be even worse than sometimes, you know, to some people worse than a, a physical abuse because the bruises go away, but mm -hmm. the mental bruises don't and that's what is so hard to deal with but there's obviously other types of abuse you know sexual abuse that, that people deal with mm -hmm. and they don't know how to combat that and i think it's scary to have to do that self journey and find that inner child because it, it really is it's you have to be strong enough to overcome refacing those those scary moments in your life in your past let me take a deep breath on that one. You're trying to make her cry? No, no. I'm being honest because yes, I'm actually on that journey now. I've been listening to podcasts um, <laughs> and trying to find a way to why am I the way I am and why do mm. I respond to certain things the way I do? Why do I have these triggers and how do I overcome it? And it's all about getting digging deep back into your your childhood and your inner child self that does say no don't do that oh no that's mm -hmm. not good or oh, diana you can't do that you're not that good why do i feel that way why do i have these feelings mm -hmm. and it's all stems back to me having to go in there and heal my child self mm -hmm. the, the child that i was that that felt insecure because i wasn't paying attention to or i wasn't given the opportunity to be myself 
and I was ridiculed for being myself. Those are the people, that's what I have to, to deal with, and that can be scary. Now, did you, before you uh, chose hypnotist, hypnosis, mm-hmm. right? I can't did- talk either. That word is hard. <laughs> Hypnotism. Did you try everything else, like the mantras, the meditations? Did you try can, anything else, or you I'm doing it all? I'm doing it all oh, at you the don't? same time. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting it all at the same time because I, I see what's coming up. Okay, so while you're visiting the childhood, you're mm-hmm. also visiting those experiences. Well, who was the? Who were those people? Yeah. And then you find out you got real names to point to every instance. And so I had to write a list down of people mm-hmm. that were key in my mm. life that triggered different things and once you start identifying that list you might, i mean my list was kind of long i was mm. like gosh it was this like person people like who did that <laughs> and then then came forgiveness right okay so that's the other part that i was mm. talking to my therapist about how do i forgive like what is the actual f- actions of forgiving and so now i'm, I'm definitely in that journey right now because there's still some people that i'm like <laughs> but it's hard that part is hard because you may never get the apology that you think you need but then i just read something else like do you really need the apology or the acceptance that you felt this way like do you need someone to be like i'm sorry that yes you felt like no i don't need someone's um allowing me to feel what i felt i don't care if you understand that i'm hurt or not i'm hurt and i have to learn how to forgive somebody whether they know it or not and in order for me to move on because you basically don't, you're not saying that you're off the hook, but you free yourself mm-hmm. off the hook of feeling the way you feel. And it's a, that's hard. It's hard, girl. I mean, I made a whole binder out oh, of shit. people. So it was like, that's good. and I wrote, I started writing letters to all the people who, and I, I think if you go in a chronological order, you kind of find it's a little bit more easier to identify who those people are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know this I mean? year. You go down up. And I was, and I was this eight and up. And then when I got to those lists and I started to write it out and I was just like, you know, you did this, this, you did this, you did this, and you did that. And you know what? I forgive you. And it's not supposed to feel good. It ain't supposed to feel like you let him off right. the hook. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I mean, as a matter of fact, if it feels like too much to, like, I don't think that's the, I don't think it's coming from a, from, from the right place. Because mm-hmm. if they've genuinely hurt you, harmed you, right. you're going to feel emotional, some, yeah. Kind of, yeah. some kind of way about mm-hmm. that. So, you know, write the list down and you know what? And I forgive you. But the other part that I was listening to was some um, Christian philosophy, which I'm not Christian, but I take my knowledge from all different sources, is that you have to find some level of empathy in the person that, you want to forgive because isn't it a trickle effect because maybe what your childhood trauma they're dealing with their own child like oh, that's man. what i had to realize for my mom <clears throat> mm-hmm. so uh, let's all, let me use one person as example like it was my uh my stepfather's uh, little sister she treated me like crap i mean like crap i used to think something was mm-hmm. wrong with me so bad and then so when i was writing the letter to her it was more of you know maybe i kind of came in and took her place i had to realize that maybe that's why she felt threatened Maybe that's why she felt so, like, who is this little, little kid that, you know, mm-hmm. come around and I had my own room and I had my own this and here she is. They made me her stay in my room and, you know, things like that that mm-hmm. I had to understand that, wow, maybe she just was coming from another place of hurt. Mm-hmm. And now that I can see it, I can forgive it. But for right. a long time, I can never forgive it. So, yeah. so know? question. So when you're writing these letters, right, are these letters actually going out to these people? Oh, or, no. So these letters are really more just for yourself and acknowledging what the pain is. Like how, how we always say in business, write things down, like, so you get things done. So yeah, it's these just, are for me. Okay. These are all for me. Um, there are some letters I haven't written yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like I'm waiting on that. Well, some people have passed on, so... Even the understanding of it, it still hasn't come to me why I should feel empathy for that. Mm-hmm. But as I grow, I, I guess mm-hmm. I'll understand it when I need to understand it. Isn't my, it a trip? my mom, though, I completely let her off the hook for everything. And that was because I started to see as a woman, mm-hmm. she was a young woman, and how she had no support. Mm-hmm. How could she make better decisions if she had nobody to mentor her? Mm-hmm. And I was going through, I was there with her. And I was like, well, I didn't see nobody there to mentor her. Mm-hmm. I didn't see nobody who had her back mm-hmm. financially or physically or any other way. Or emotionally, because, <laughs> I mean, you know, well, who do you talk to? So how do I bang on a 22-year-old, 23-year-old with, you know, a little, little kid or mm-hmm. four of them? How do I do that? I can really, it's hard now. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm older, and I could see that. And you're a mom now. I'm I'm a mom. I got two kids, and you know, one is in high school, and the other one just graduated high school. There's just no way I could be upset with a 22, mm-hmm. 24, 29 year old woman 
who just doesn't have that life experience yet. Do you feel, though, that she taught you, like, that m- ambition to be, a, like, a hustler, though? That well, you are? she's definitely a hustler, for sure. So that's kind of where, like, but she locks you- on to things. She's, like, when she puts her teeth into it, it's she obsesses about mm-hmm. it till she achieves it. And she always achieves what she's going for. It might take a while, but she's going to achieve whatever. Do you feel like maybe you got that from her? I, that's how I feel you are. I think I think I look at my mom. She's inspiring because she is that focused. And like I said, she latches on. But I think I more gravitate towards my father in, in personality and characteristics. Like I'm able to cut certain things out. Eventually I start seeing, ah, <laughs> it's no good for me. <laughs> I'm cutting it out. Mm. And whereas my mom, she'll hold on to it even if it's not, no okay. longer serves her. And so that would kind of bug me. I'd be like, Mom, you know, let it go. Or let that person go. Or can't mm. you see that they are, you know, mm. I see she, what you're saying. she couldn't really see it that mm. same way until after. And she'd be like, you're right. That was right. You guys shouldn't listen to it. I'm like, uh. Whereas my father would have cut it short mm. as soon as he saw it, the traits. So you're like kind of a, a mix of the best mix of the both. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, but my father, I didn't grow up with him. So. It was, a characteristic I, I didn't grow up with him until later, and then to find out that we were very, very much alike in a lot of ways. But um, one thing that I would take away from my father and my mom that neither one of them do is that um, acknowledging my mistakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Admitting and... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm better at that than Accepting they are. responsibility. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. way, way... Even if, even if I'm taking a hit for other people, I will find that in my life experience. I'll take the hit for my group. But what a I good role model for your kids like that, though. But that's because I'm pretty sure you're doing the work that, you know, they probably didn't either have access to back then or they, they didn't have that support, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and you're doing that now. So you, you your growth... Is um, is amazing, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. I love the fact that you're doing all kind of stuff, um, especially the hypnotist stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Want sure right? to no. try it? Let's try it. No, no, I don't want to try that. Let's get a hypnotist on here. No, I think I want to be hypnotized. I think that'd be great. No, I, I do enough. I just don't want to bark like a dog. That's all I want. I don't want to bark. You're like doing dog. hypnotism already. Okay. okay. How? Well, because this show is about to turn into something else that look, that that I want, didn't want to talk. Not that I did not want to talk about, but it's interesting because I feel like it's a whole other show. But I'm intrigued by you're what you're now. doing. Um, you're doing it every time you watch a TV, every time you watch a commercial. They are hypnotizing you. It's the same. No, okay, same right. Process. No, you're right. It's even listening to music, um, mm-hmm. you're right. Um, Repetition. Um, or even tone changes um, everything. Oh man, you're it's like when you go into Vegas and you go to a casino, they really hip to you. That's how mm-hmm. you're able to stay in a casino for so long, like not even know that it's Speak nighttime. For yourself, because my butt will I take $20 <laughs> if I don't win, I'm out. If I win, I take that win and I leave. So I am, I don't do, I don't, I don't get addicted very easily. That's my problem. That's my story. I'm the twenty dollar and I'm done. That's not mm-hmm. me. Yeah. I'm if I like, I my husband is butt. really good at roulette. And That's we'll my go. game. Why well, we never talked about that? I don't know. So we'll go. <laughs> he'll we'll go the first date. He'll go. He'll put in like a hundred bucks. He'll win like maybe a grand. We leave. I'm I'm very adamant. Like no, we get the, get that shit. Let's go. And we spend it. And we don't use any of our money. We mm-hmm. just use what he wins. And we go to dinner. And we got. We I mean we stay at my family, so we're gonna worry about a house. You know, a place to stay. We use it for all that stuff, and then we go home. And if we, you know, there's no point. If you use a thousand, that's that's it like you don't mm. spend anymore mm-hmm. i'm not about to put my house on you know the line or no hell no I'm, i don't but i don't like I to gamble. a strategy I'm a, I'm a great gambler i'm not a an addictive gambler but i have a strategy that i stick with and i'm mm. probably and i'll tell everybody this because i can go to vegas right now and 70 percent of the time i actually win but what about the 30 percent so I mean, that's, that's too but, high of a variable for no, me. No, but that's that's the, <laughs> that's the like game though lose. that's the game I, but i love it though i love the thrill of it and i only play roulette but I also go with a number in my head. Like I say, okay, if I go to Vegas tonight, I'm gonna say I'm gonna take five grand, oh and that's God. all. I'm, that's like you. No, it's like it's like it's like investment. Like investment is the same as gambling. Mm-hmm. So you have a number in your mind, and once you do it, you got to forget about it. But if so you I'm never going there, win, like for me, I never win. Well, like Mike see, wins, and I you're never play. gonna win with that attitude. That's mindset. Mm-hmm. We okay, talked about this mindset. before. Okay. If you if you put it out there that you're never gonna win, you're never gonna win. I always win. Okay. Hmm. 
that's why I can continue to go and have these big numbers in my I used head. to go with it's that like, mindset, like, I'm, I'm going to win big, and but then I would go and I didn't But you got to also have a, have a strategy. I have a strategy. Like, when I play roulette, I only play certain numbers, and I watch the board, and if my numbers aren't yeah, up there. You, you are a cod counter, and I, we yeah, play bones. and we, I do. We, we, I watch. You're he watches. To, you're supposed to count. You're supposed to count. And you're not yeah. supposed to play um, short money. It's, it's long money. Yeah. They almost, like, set you up to, to, to Exactly. Lose. Like when even I do when I do the um uh the uh for machines. the record though you didn't win at Bones last time twice with no money on the lost. table ah <laughs> maybe it would have been a different outcome You're right. so you need incentive <laughs> there was yeah. no money on the pool table either like you get real and you won at those that was yeah pool is different like I got to whoop somebody ass okay pool. so five grand. You go there. You say I'm prepared to lose, lose five, five grand. grand. Yeah, I'm prepared to walk away and still I'm be never happy with five grand. To lose five grand. Well, tell me the self talk. Say exactly what you say to yourself. I'm prepared to lose five grand Shit. if or and fill, fill in the blank for that. If or and. Yeah, I'm prepared to lose five grand. And this is how I'm going to win it. Like if that. I lose, I could put five grand. Go to the roulette table. Put five grand on look on number eight. And, and roll it one time. And if I lose, I lose. Because I already know that I'm going to lose a five. I'm already prepared to walk away, go home without five, negative five grand. That's my playing money. Okay. See, I don't have that. I don't. I could never take five grand for playing money. Mm-hmm. I, and I just don't know. Maybe even if I... You know what? You know. It's, 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 it's about... <laughs> it's, it's how I'm always saying, like, how I'm always on this higher frequency, 528, right? Mm-hmm. If you're... If you're, if you're Dealing on a lower frequency, mm-hmm. it's like the universe wants you, you to win. The universe low, wants you to have all your dreams, right? Mm-hmm. And speaking of like, cause we talk, that's part of the subject yeah. you're talking about, you know, your dreams are free. The universe wants you to have all this stuff, but it's way up here on this higher frequency. You so if you're in there. a negative mood and way down here, the universe ain't going to dip down to you. Mm-hmm. You got to go up there and get it. So you got to figure out how to get out of that negative space, get on your higher frequency, and then it's there for you. You're right. You're and right. that's why the universe is always changing your path. Because mm-hmm. once you go off path, it says, is, okay well now i gotta readjust because mm-hmm. it's here you know it might move over here and say okay i'm here i'm over here it's like trying to give it to you but you're way down here in your negative thinking mm-hmm. okay. same way of gambling I so i'm like I, i'm going with five grand i'm good i'm gonna win okay mm. i think all that stuff ties into the hypnotism um and because hypnotism doesn't have to occur from an outside source mm-hmm. it's really it's an internal thing and it sounds to me like you're you're dabbling in it without i know really you know what it. i want to Cause that that could be a whole nother three hours we're gonna talk, but I want to talk to you more about that because that is interesting. I love the point of view that you just brought up, mm-hmm. so I do want to know more about it. At first, yeah, I I, I don't think I want to have someone put me under because mm-hmm. I don't trust people, <laughs> but you know, but I, I definitely want to know more about it. That's interesting. Okay, I'm not a professional by no means. I'm not no, but I'm it's learning. still it's just from your experience. Like mm-hmm. I can learn from your experience. Yeah. Just in the little knowledge that you're given now is like, oh, that is true. Like mm-hmm. when you watch TV, it's true. Yeah. I mean, when you watch, what do you think commercials are for? Right. No, it's right. It's but we don't think about it. To get you to buy or to get you to look into or do this. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, and so, a lot of us fall right into. There. So speaking of the dream, the dream is always free. The hustle is so separately. So what was your dreams? Because this is why I feel like when we're kids, like we have these big dreams, right? But then when we're adults, you know, life gets in the way, you know, mm-hmm. whether you get, you know, relationships, kids, our you know, life circumstances, you. you know, reality. And then we lose our dreams, right? But we shouldn't because dreams are free and, and you need to dream big. Um, I would say that one of my dreams was back in New Orleans. I'm nine years old. I remember it. I remember the school had one of those uh, assemblies and this little girl got up there and she started singing and I remember saying, I want to do that. Okay. I, I can do that. I want to do that. I mean, I remember that being intense, but I also remember having the same sensation of, oh, you can't because you're Muslim and Muslim, Muslim people can't, you know, and, and that may not, may or may not be true, but growing up, I did Muslim girls just didn't have that, um, exposure like that mm-hmm. you weren't really supposed to be looking for attention mm-hmm. and even if i did have that talent nobody was there to nurture it at mm-hmm. that time because they were focused on other things mm-hmm. that's what i peeped but it still stayed with me and so later on as i finally did embracing it finally at 28 god lee chief um <laughs> i i first time i ever sang i mean i wanted to sing my family they would listen to me and they turns out they thought that i could but then i just never would open up my voice i felt uh, trapped you felt constricted oh my gosh mm-hmm. so karaoke at 28 yeah. um guess who was hosting that tiffany haddish in uh oh, oh shit. Wow. she was hosting that back in um in la off a of motor it was this uh this bar club and then so that that stayed with me 
And then when I started singing, it was just like every week, even though I feel scared every single time people would think that I'm not, I am terrified, mm-hmm. but I still am pushing through it. So now from 28 to right now my age, man, I've got to put in quite a few hours. Okay, so it. from nine years old to 28, yeah. you lost your dream mm-hmm. somehow, right? Yeah. She so what 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 brought it back? Like what, that what was sparked that. it? That was it. Did Once I finally opened up my mouth and did it, it was like cool. If I could do it once, I could do it Hand again. Right. Well. Even if even if I'm terrified, I can do it again. Mm-hmm. And and I, it's, that's why I do. I literally force myself. And as we were talking about earlier, you were like you seem like you might be. Uh, you're not nervous. I said, what made you think that? Because I put something in front of my face that says, "Do you want what you want more than you want the anxiety mm-hmm. of yeah. the event?" And that's where you push through it. That's where the maturity comes because I don't think it that comes easy. Mm-hmm. You gotta want it. And mm-hmm. now I want, I want to be successful in what I'm pushing through. Right. You know, I, I want to be a successful host, not just karaoke. Karaoke was like a vehicle for me to right. to add to what I was already wanting to do. But man, I just want to be a host. And you have a good game face though, too, because I can't ever tell if you're nervous or not. But that's why. But, but even like on. like I, that's because I know people are nervous, right? When they never done something for it. But even like when we was coming into the building, you did say, or when you, when we got in here, you said, um, "Hey, I never did uh, a podcast before." Mm-hmm. But breaking it down, like how you said earlier, if you can do it once, you can do it again, right? Mm-hmm. And I tell people that all the time. If you you already set the bar, you did it. So you've already accomplished mm-hmm. it. You completed a task. Now just do it again. So you've done, you do karaoke, right? You're a host of uh, karaoke and you're great at it. So it's just like that. So you're in the mic and you're talking to a crowd, but now you're just in here talking to us. It's the same thing. It's, it's no really difference. You just got to find, like you're doing great right now too, by the way. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So for you. I can't you, tell that you're, you at all felt nervous. Right. So. Because you're used to being in a mic. And I said that to you downstairs. I said, well, you're used to being in front of a mic, so it's going to be easy. Well, I love talking to people. That's my other thing. Okay, that's my superpower. Take a mic away. I just love talking to people. I love getting into their stories. I love Mm -hmm. kind of interacting with people. I like looking them directly in their eyes. And for that moment, I give them my full attention. And then then I fly away. You get there. Okay. Um, I think I would be great at that, but then I wouldn't have my art to go to. Yeah, you're right. Never mind. That's not your goal. No, because I'm really good at all that stuff, but... Could be a singing therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, look. I just said that. I'll say, so, Diana, every time somebody comes up, they always say the same exact words to me. It's like, I know what they're going to say before they say it. If I sing, the whole place is going to clear out, and they're going to run away. And I'm just like, all right, mm-hmm. listen. So I get to practice my therapy at that time, which, which is sometimes I tell people, mm-hmm. just take a deep breath. Breathe once, and right. I'll sit there and breathe with them. <laughs> Two, three, and then help them. I'll say, now do it. And then, or I'll say something like, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, you've been through way worse things than this. Yeah. I promise you, you have. <laughs> you, you, you've listened to my podcast before. I've, I've listened to it to do my I know, my I say that all the time. This. No, I've told people that but, all the time. Like, what we go through on, on a daily basis, think about, like, I'm 51. I've been through 51 years of bullshit. So what I went through this morning <laughs> or out, yesterday, I the first year. like, no, for real. <laughs> I know, I know. And you know what I mean? Like, if I can get through all those years of everything that I went through, why can I get through today if I'm having a bad day? Mm-hmm. It's That's just one I more day. I always say to people, like, ain't nobody getting paid for this shit. Get up there and have some fun, <laughs> goddammit. Like, really? really? So, I'm going to go laminate because I get, I go up and down just like everybody else. Right. I'm going to go laminate all positive messages that I've gotten from people, stuff I write down on my mirror, um, uh, just little notes, and I'm put on the laminate, and I'm going to put that right in front of me. Mm-hmm. And from now on, whenever I have these bouts of doubt or maybe a, a, an interesting, I don't like to say problem, mm-hmm. but a, a challenging um, guest or somebody that just kind of throws me off my square, I'm going to refer back to this little laminate and I'm going to keep it right there underneath my mic just so I can, <laughs> okay, you're, you're okay, you're good. And have it everywhere. Don't just have it by you. Have it in your on your mirror. Have it in your car. Have it on your, your KJ booth. Um, make a manifestation board. Okay, tell me more. So you go, you know, we did this as a workshop with Nostalgia Glory. Shout out to Luce. I love her. What up, Luce? Um, We did a a manifestation board workshop, so you should probably do those again. Maybe you should come. Mm -hmm. As she gives us a big old, you know, pin board, whatever you call those cork board things, and piles of magazines, and you go through it, and you clip out, where do you want to travel to? What kind of car do you want to drive in Mm -hmm. the next two, five years? What kind of house do you want? What do you want to do for a career? Um, What are some quotes that really, you know, 
stick with you or mm -hmm. strike home with you. Um, what's important to you? So, you know, pictures of your family, pictures, you know, of your dog or mm -hmm. whatever. So, and, and I made this manifestation board. And every time that I, I forget what I'm doing or why I'm doing what I'm doing, I look at my board and like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, there's my venue that I want in, in you know, two or five years. There's the car I want to be driving in the next two years. There's the house I really want or mm -hmm. a house like that. Mm -hmm. I want a pole in my backyard. There's a picture of a pole. Mm -hmm. um, there's quotes. My bank account, what do I want my bank account to look like? And it's a manifestation, and it goes right along with you in that higher mm. frequency right. in, in reminding yourself where you belong, where you where you deserve to be, where you want to be, and then not letting yourself forget that. And I, I think we do. We get are caught up in the daily grind where we forget why we're fucking working so hard and mm -hmm. why we're doing things for it. Why do I want to build an empire so my children have something to to look forward to when they get older because this world is crazy. And so there's all these like things I think about and I have it on my board. I like that. I think I call mine a vision board. I never call it a manifestation board. But Yeah, it was the same. Um, but but I, yeah, yeah, I, I never right. heard a manifestation board. Yeah, it's I like, like actually she cut it out in wood. Yeah. So it's like manifestation. I like the word manifestation no, better than, than just vision. Because vision, yeah. manifestation seems more action orientated mm -hmm. versus vision is more dreamlike state, right. like what you're talking about. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, I've done one years ago and I looked at the list like 10, 15 and you years later. All of them. Oh, I, 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 all of those things that were on there came true. And oh, I was man. just like, dude, I should have went way bigger than what I did. <laughs> well, this, that means you got to make a new one. <laughs> like, make a new well, one. even when I made a new one, I started to see that I, I need to make another one, like mm -hmm. for now, for this mind state, because that was a little bit more materialistic. And then I realized I really don't even want those things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, the things that I want are a little bit more. It, <sighs> deeper than that. Mm -hmm. it's like, I, okay, I put the car on there. I put the, you know, the house, mm -hmm. those. Yeah. It was nice, but it didn't give me a sense of um, peace mm -hmm. and tranquility about it. It just felt like something I would just have on the surface. Mm -hmm. I want the vision board that really de decides or ha has more definition of, um, like I could see myself with a with a picture of me smiling, like a joyous face. Like I want those achievements yeah, to be because more constant in my well, life. Well, everything yeah. else will, I feel like will fall in line with that face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that will match that so energy. So do that. Yeah, I think that's where I want to go. You should that should be like the center of your board, and then everything is like a spider web out like that. Because of how where I'm at, this is going to happen, and because I'm going to stay positive, this is going to happen, mm -hmm. and because I'm I am dealing with my demons and I am focused on getting past it, this is going to happen, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to take my kids to see this, and I'm going to experience this in life. Yeah, and, I like that. And, and you know, when when you do things like that, you have to be real specific. You know, I, I study Buddhism, and that's what they teach you in Buddhism. Like, you have to be real specific in what you want. Like, so for instance, you said you want to, you know, work with your voice, do like voiceovers and stuff like that. But be, be let's be specific. Oh, I can't even say the word. I'm so glad right I'm not right. the only one that has tongue ties. Best. I could see you Specify. like specify <laughs> like voiceovers, but like I could see you doing like stuff for Disney. I could see you doing right. So that's that's my stuff. point. Like so, what studio? you want to work with what movie do you want to well, do like i want to host events that's okay, what i'm gonna like do what type i mean of event? I, i'm i already picture like the night at the apollo the apollo theater um events were well big big events a big humongous stadium what's the name size of your events event? well what's the name of my event i'm not that specific but that's what i mean but this is what you okay. have to do though like so friend let's make it okay. simpler okay. you have a dream car dream car yes what's your dream car um it's this Mercedes Benz with the with the wings out. Okay, know? what color? Uh, it's silver. Okay, what color is the interior? Black. Black. See, black on black. Black on silver. Black on silver. Okay, and it's what dope. year is the car? Um, well, I think that that one was about a, like a 2012 or something like that. Don't give me lying. This is her dream life for him. Yeah, yeah, this was a little bit this, but you know, I I got away from the car. Now I just want the transportation. It. it okay. To I get have, it. So my prayers now, I don't ask for the specific. I want to mention. I say, Lord, bless me with uh, um, housing that mm -hmm. is beautiful. And, you know, I kind of call it, even though it's not a specific, calling it a mansion, but it's something about I will be happy with different things. Okay, but see, here's the difference. You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I know exactly what you mean, but okay. here's the difference. So when you manifest things and you want things, right, it's okay to say, hey, I want this Mercedes. Hey, I want this, you know, five acre mansion, whatever. Right. But 
on a daily basis, yes, we're supposed to be gratitude. grateful, mm -hmm. grateful that I have a house, grateful that I have but a But I'd car. be happy with a loft in I the know Hollywood you would, Hills. But that's, that's, but that's, that's not what the manifestation, it, it would, manifestation is your, what, if you could just, if you had the choice of anything in the right. world, if, if, if all these houses were at your disposal and you said pick, they said pick one, what house do you want? It doesn't mean that you're not happy with the housing you have now right. or you're not appreciative, but that's just your manifestation. That's what, that's like literally putting that out there in the universe. Not to say that you might not, right. you might get that exact house. You might get something similar. You might get something totally different depending mm -hmm. on, because manifestation doesn't mean you just say, I want this and then sit back and wait. You're literally saying this, but then you're also putting the hard work. That goes to, to getting it. something like that, right? That's the, and even like I pray too. I'm like, thank you for like waking me up today. Oh yeah. You know, thank you for letting me get to the office today in one piece. Cause Lord knows today was in, you know? <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. I'm great. I'm grateful, mm. but I know on my board, it shows a beautiful, uh, you know, what is that called? That pool, that, um, infinity pool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got all these ideas I want to yeah. do and, and, and I see that and I can feel that I'm like, that's happening. So like, that's the hustle preaching. that, that, mm. that we're, we're talking about today. Like mm -hmm. we're hustling, we put in that work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like every day, yeah, I, I'm grateful every day. And, and it's okay I, to be specific. It's no, okay. Yeah. And I had to learn that because I thought by being specific, I was being like greedy. stingy and greedy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then I had to learn about that. And I was like, no, like mm -hmm. you have to like be specific on Because the universe is like, what the hell do you want? What, do you put right. the, what, what, what are we going? Which way are we going? Well, and how I'm would like, you describe this one? Um, I want beautiful things, but I see that with more comes more you have mm -hmm. to do for it. Yeah. And, and I don't want to do all that extra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not being honest. I, I, I mean, like, like I pictured the big mansion. I pictured all that, She's and like, I pictured. I gotta pay for a I, housekeeper, a landscaper, no, a pool taxes, cleaner, the every taxes. year. <laughs> I don't. That's the part right now. You can't even get me over the landscaper and the taxes. That's who I think of when I think well, of that big I mean, house. But then you think about you might be in a position at that point when you have that house that that's not even going to matter oh, to yeah. you, and then you're now benefiting someone else's. Like the landscaper is now making his dreams come true and putting his kids through college mm -hmm. because you were able to you gave him a him. job you gave him a job so now you're now now you're you're benefiting someone else and that mm -hmm. is why the universe is blessing you with this house because you're in a place that you can afford it it's not even a thought now but now you're giving a housekeeper a job a, ho a landscaper a pool person maybe An you have assistant. a chauffeur driver assistant you guys are so altruistic you know the rock came out there one day he was doing a video and he said Hey guys, I'm just up here and I'm working out and I'm doing my thing. And you know, I just I just want to let you guys all know that I have to keep on doing my thing because I have all these people depending on me. And to me, that was terrifying. No, I, it's not. Oh it's yeah, not. it's so great. It, it, like it seemed great, but I can see in his eyes that he had so much care for his for the people that. But he, that's not scary. He couldn't. He couldn't afford. To, to not, to, to not do it. He couldn't afford well, to hurt but a that's leg. that's what or, his blessing was. It right. was his blessing. And, and that, that. that goes to um, Ernie, not Ernie, uh, uh, Andreas from Rio. Oh, yeah. His he story. The same thing. He, the, I don't know if you, do you know Andreas? No. The, the I mean, owner I may, of Rio? I may have met him. Rio okay, right. So sure. he employs 75 families. Not just people, but he was telling us when we was talking to him and interviewing him for social this is all audit. over because he has right. businesses in Colombia and Brazil and here. And like he what he does allows for people to have food on their on their table that mm -hmm. night for their kids. It allows their kid to go to soccer, mm -hmm. allows their kid. And these are kids that are, are you know, are from Colombia, let's say. You know, what they make, what he gives them, in a, in, you know, for their hourly wage is like their baller status. And right. they're so grateful. And he works hard every day because that's his, what he was. Yeah, that's his path. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not everybody's path. Like, that's The Rock's path. That's Andrea's path. Yeah, yeah. But what did, um, what's that guy that, uh, I can't believe I forgot, Pitbull. He was on this thing and he said, you know, I believed, you know, money isn't everything. Right. Money isn't, ha isn't by happiness. And someone said, he said, but. They, the guy, whoever was talking to said, no, you're wrong. Money does, he's like, money doesn't buy happiness, but money gives happiness because you give it away. Right. You give that money away and that's what creates happiness. And if you're in a position that you have a lot of money, give it away. Yeah. Not to mm -hmm. say that you shouldn't support yourself. You know, you can, you take care of what you need to do, but you don't, like all these people, like all these billionaires are just like, I need more money. It's like, yeah. no, take care of the people. That's what, what's wrong with you mm -hmm. is that you need to, whatever you need to survive, what you need to make your life mm -hmm. manifested, whatever you did to make sure that your life is handled, but then the rest, give it away. 
I, I, I'm, I'm for that. I don't like hoarding. Mm -mm. I don't like hoarding, especially hoarding resources. But I think resources. when, like for me, I come from my background is like we didn't have money. Mm -hmm. So when my focus is I make I make money so I never feel that way again. I'll never be homeless. I'll never be this because I'm like so adamant about I'll never feel that way again. Mm -hmm. So I, when I make money, I need to learn that. I need to learn that it's okay to let go and to help others. And that's, so it's like it's a crazy struggle for me. Because I'm so mm. scared of being broke again. Um, that's why I'm like the saver. Like mm -hmm. I, I like to spend, but I am like really okay. You guys wouldn't believe how many jars of money of Don't coins that, I have around my around that. my house. <laughs> like jars of money, and it's just coins because I I just remember that. What would I do if I, I have Coca Cola bottles full of of coins? Because you never know. You never know. You what never if I'm going to need something? I know. I'm that crazy. Yeah, I'm that. Toilet paper. I, I'm, I have PTSD because of toilet paper. I literally have a reserve because I'm like, if this shit ever happens again, mm -hmm. I know I got shit paper. And you know, mm -hmm. it's, you know it's funny. <laughs> Seriously. You know what's funny about that? Because, you know, um, my mother-in-law just passed away. Yeah. And so me and Nina was at her house um, the other day cleaning up, right? And like, just kind of going through things. And she had this vase, right, with flower, like fake flowers coming out of it, right? Mm -hmm. And... I took the flowers out and then I lift the vase up and it was, it was a colored heavy. vase. It was heavy and it was things in the bottom and, and it was a tall vase. And I looked at it and I was like, you know, your mom got things hidden in this vase. <laughs> like what's in there? So I dumped it and it was like, oh, at first, cause I told her it was a uh, medicine cause it was in me big medicine vials, like pill pop. Mm. Right? I was like, Is she hit her medicine. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so I dumped it on the bed, but all those um, bottles was filled with coins, like quarters. Yeah, and I was like, "What?" She's like, "Oh yeah, my mom hides all that stuff." She's like, "I don't know why." In case anything but it, happens exactly. one day, exactly. And I, I think that. it's because when you like, go all through, through our house, it, yeah, like, all through our house, she had coins like everywhere, mm -hmm. just hidden. Like, yes, I'm, I'm, just, I'm huge on saving. I like to spend too. Don't get me wrong. I have my you know my moments. Like I make sure I have enough. Like okay, I put this in savings and I put this towards bills. Okay, and I have this. I can go spend this. Yay, you know whatever. But like I am so scared of being broke again. Like, if I'm so scared, like, oh, my God, if I can't feed my kids and my, you know, my kids are pretty much grown now. But still, my thought is like, <gasps> if, you know, I can't do this or what if we need tires or, you know, yeah. I hate that feeling. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it's really ingrained in me because I, I grew up with the, always having the topsy turvy mm -hmm. life. And that was something that my mom, she would she 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 believed in the pawn shop. And, you know, like, I still have jewelry since I was a little kid, right? Mm -hmm. But me, I refuse to not have something that I can pawn. Aww. Is it, is it, are you, do you know what I'm saying? I I'm know like, what you're saying. It's like, like something I, of value just in I case. I need something just in case I have to pawn something. God, you know, God's bless me. I haven't had to pawn anything. But, Lord, what I'm not going to do is pick up the phone and have to call my friends oh, yeah. or, or my family. Oh, I, I detest that. And I, I hate yeah. owing people. Like, if I owe somebody, like, even if it's five bucks, I'm like, hey, I, 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 I got to give you the five dollars back yeah. because i don't want to have that on my conscience. oh my gosh so it's money money does but, but that. that's, that's the lack of money will do that <laughs> i mean but some people are just just what well, no because so you know what because what i did is and i learned this from um from uh nina's dad i used to collect coins years ago and um so i, I purchased and invested in like all these like rare coins like I, ha I literally have a box full of them, mm -hmm. but I don't want to ever want to touch them. Like I want them for my kids. Mm -hmm. So when, I mean, they're older now, but you know, if something ever happens, you know, like, like a baseball card or anything like that. Do I have a baseball like, card? Like, I know some people collect baseball. No, cards. no, I strictly have coins. You don't even look them up and just see what they're worth. No, because I already know what they're worth. Um, oh, okay. I, I I've been doing this for twenty years, so I know what they're worth. Um, but Can you put a note in the box? Well, no, it? I did. Like okay. when I purchased them, I put a note what they was worth 20 years ago and what I paid for it. And so now, you know, I know they're So when the kids value. open up the box, yeah, they, they, they don't they have know. to be like. What is the range of value you think in that box? I'm not going to tell you that. Why? So I got to go put it in a safe somewhere. Go put it somewhere else. I, 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 just so I used to have somebody coins come too. come to my house and rob me. <laughs> I know. Well, no one knows where they live. But like, I used to have coins too. And I. I went through a really bad time in my life, and I went to go take them in, and I didn't get what I thought. But no, I was no. So get. these these aren't like coins in your pocket. These are like minted coins that are are wrapped in. Um, oh, they're different. They're 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 so sealed like and they're um, uh, graded. So like a lot of my coins are sixty nine or seventy. So seventy two is the highest grade. Um, so oh, a lot of them are sixty nine, seven. They're actually professionally graded, and they're they're in this plastic, um, not bag, but plastic. Uh, 
like a little little ca- acrylic little case yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. A case, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can't even touch them. That's um, different. So yeah, I'm talking about these like are ones like, that, like I just old need you to put dimes a, and a shit. note oh, in no. there. I just need you to put a note in there, say son or grandson or granddaughter or whomever who who opens this box. Just know that don't let don't take less than this amount for this yeah, particular yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, let Because up. if I looked at it, I'd be like, oh, this is oh. cool. Look what he had. Oh, I know. Coins. Well, no, because my my um, my my son and daughter like they know because um, their granddad, who I got it from, he he's taught them about it. So they, they wouldn't would just take it and be like stupid with it. Like, give me five dollars for this dollar. Like, I got a dollar that's worth a hundred dollars. Like, that's you know, cool. Yeah, like they wouldn't just say, "Hey, give me ten dollars for the dollar." Like, they they know like. So you know, this the reason why we even got why I came out to Lancaster is because um, I wanted to own a home. They kept on uh, selling every place I would live. I was renting in 2000s, right? And every time I get comfortable at a place, got a beautiful park across the street, they would sell the house. And then the, I would see the young uh, family members would come and inherit the house and dispose of grandma's property like it was nothing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's what happened about three times. Around the third time, I said, look it. All right, I see what the writing on the wall. Then we had the housing market crash. Mm. That became my window for me to er- yeah. purchase a property with the little bit of money I was earning. And then so I, I you know, I started stalking realtors and try to learn about <laughs> how did that work. I wind up getting a pre-approval. And I was getting beat out by cash investors to buy my yeah, house. Yeah. That always and, happens. Uh, now, why this is important is because when I did buy the house, I bought the house without even looking at it. Mm. Yeah, one of those deals. Like, I had a pre-approval. I was going to spend that 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 yeah. that currency that was available and I, all i saw was the pictures i said put an offer on it and give them extra three thousand and that's how i came to lancaster never stepping a foot now out when here. you went into it were you happy oh there's a lot of work I'm, to be done you guys don't even i, I know that must have been my I, I must have been inspired to do whatever i was doing mm-hmm. because it was like a fire had been lit underneath my ass to do it mm-hmm. i mean i was aggressive but for me to get beat out by cash investors you, you, the only way you could do that is with cash because right. yeah. my money was tight and he was ready to go. And that's the, the sad thing is that that that's what's going to happen if we do hit the recession is that all these cash investors are going to just rip through this poor town and buy up everything that's available. And mm-hmm. you're not getting it back mm-hmm. because they're putting it in big hedge funds and mm-hmm. everything else. It's it's a wrap for you. So, mm-hmm. so it's like, like build now, start saving now because well, when that shit happens, it's time that, to buy. That brings me back to why I did that was following the following what my intuition is telling me. Mm -hmm. And so now what I'm doing right now is following what my intuition is telling me. Just keep on doing it. And it was like a fire underneath my ass. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just go for it. So we're talking about the hustle, the dream, but the hustle part. It's like, when it's right, when the timing is right, you're gonna feel it. It feels like mm-hmm. something. I don't mm-hmm. know. I would describe it like a feeling in it's my an chest. It's exciting fire though. Like it's scary, but it's like I'm excited. Scary. Mm-hmm. It's like somebody warning you. Mm-hmm. For me, and it's like if you don't, you better do this shit. You yeah. can be living underneath that bridge or have to move to Texas because that's your two choices right mm-hmm. now. Because that's where I see the people who couldn't survive. Because yeah. you used to be able to survive in LA with one income. Oh, that's oh, no. that's a wrap. Even two incomes now is like still paycheck to paycheck. Like me and my husband were like literally like I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like why aren't we? You know, twenty years ago we would have been rolling in dough. Um, yeah, it's really hard. So I mean, so with those blessings that I feel like I've gotten right now, my house got a grip of equity in it. Had that's I not awesome. did that, I would have been just like stuck like a duck. Mm-hmm. So I'm following my intuition now. Keep going, Tifa. Just keep on putting one step in front. You call yourself Tifa? Yeah, I call myself Tifa. I love Tifa. it. But that's keep part of going. the hustle, though. I mean, you, you have to go. You gotta. You can't give up. You know, you got to keep grinding. And sacri- like I said earlier, the sacrifices, you know. And, when people, and it's okay. I could tell, like, you probably get on yourself sometimes. Oh, yeah. But daily. I think But I think you have the fire in you to keep going. Because I feel oh, like yeah. right now when you, when you said that, you just kind of look a certain yeah. way. yeah. Cause it's serious. But it's we serious all business. say that to ourselves. It's serious business. Yeah. Look at who's re- who's relying upon us mm-hmm. for us to do Our well. Family. I mean, you can't just decide you want to be in creative arts and then, you know, it's already limited amount of money if you when you're starting off anyhow. Um, oh, yeah. being an artist already is like yeah. You're, yeah. How are you going like to support what? yourself? Like what? Oh, yeah. Well, so now so, you have kids. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> yeah. what, what's next for you? Um, so what's next is keep on walking in my path. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I, I have been training myself better. So now I'm going to learn how to use this controller so I can add DJing to my sets because that's another thing that I I've always it. wanted to do. It's a lot of movement. It's a lot of quick thought processing mm-hmm. and everything like that, investing in myself. Um, 
getting a real hosting gig. Like when I say real, I don't mean what I'm doing is not real. I mean something where I'm speaking to a larger audience. audience. And that's like an opener for like different events. Basically. Oh, yes. I mean, people have to be they have to be become familiar with you and see if you can even handle well, that's that. an MC position. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So just yeah. do it. Do an event. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. You can't talk it's, to me about that because I'll just say go create an event. Look, it, my grandmother used to make these events. So I already know it's in there. It's mm-hmm. in there. So now I'm just like, hey, I, I started speaking up about it. My mom says, well, what do you want? Why don't you just ask me? You've never asked me for anything. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I you, never you know, really asked you for anything. I don't, I don't know if you know, um, but I actually know one of the top event planners out here. No, nice. she, she, she is a, it's a company called eventually events. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I know you met her a few <laughs> times. Big arrow going so, like <laughs> so, you know, yeah. you get with her and already, you guys put I've together an tried. event. I mean, and you MC it. I mean, I'm just saying like, that's what I'm talking about. I should so. be a motivational speaker. Well, I think you really, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of hats on there, Mike. Because really I, I mean, I'm a hustler too. Like I go out and do what I want to do. Like you know, I, I never thought about doing a podcast, but you know, when, when, we, when me and my business partner Carlos talked about it, you know, I just go out and do things. Like I, that's why I just told you, like go create an event. Like I didn't want to go be on somebody else's podcast. I said, you know what, we just gonna do it. I just did it. Like and we and did I'm it, and, and there was no like, where is it gonna happen? What's no, the we just did it. There's no like, let's have the perfect setting. Right. Like, he was like. Well, fuck it. Because that's how you have to do things. We're real people. We're not staged. We're not faking this. This is real shit. Like, look, I'm going to tell you, like I tell a lot of of artists, you know, I've been doing entertainment for 30 years, right? And people always tell me, I want to do a podcast or I want to do a record. I want, like, I got a record on Apple right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm I'm not trying to be an artist. I just, it was something on my bucket list. I just did it, right? And once you do something, you know, regardless of how bad it's going to be or how bad you think it is going to be, at least you have a product now. Mm -hmm. And now from there, you can shape it and build it to what you want. But if you don't do it and it's just stuck in your head, it's never going to come to fruition. Oh, shit. I can't talk. Thank you. (laughs) It's not going to come alive, right? What did I say the other day with Mike? I said, right Right. now he has tons of music. He has three laptops with thousands of songs that he's, he's there. made and i said it, the answer right now from anybody is no why because it's there's nobody no knows one. about it but if you yeah. get it out there there's a chance there could be a yes right why why are you, you afraid of a no it. when it's no now what like, are you afraid of just do it and I, I mean i told him the same thing just put it on youtube put it on distro kid what it apple music mm-hmm. it's easy to do all these things now you don't need a manager you don't need a big record mm-hmm. deal you don't need Everybody's nothing you can do whatever you want by yourself right now like just do it well i'm glad you guys said that because what i do know about diana and mike is that you guys are about community and you guys yeah. are really about developing what the city is bringing to offer so i'm at the right place right and walking in the right steps and yes absolutely we will be doing some projects we will be moving forward <laughs> on that i have no doubt about it because i'm we're i'm already here that's mm-hmm. already telling Actually. me that i'm walking in the right steps with that right. now i will say this um community and meeting people and staying in your house ain't it that's right. what i would say so like right now this weekend i took a um a serving gig you know because i'm like i'm just trying to stay busy and stay in the mix mm-hmm. I, the key is not just doing what you're going to do but staying around the right people yes so yeah that's why i'm not taking an office gig because the mm-hmm. office is not going to take me you're around right those folks unless it's an A&R office or a record office or something like that but other than that I need to stay around the music mm-hmm. so I took a serving gig over here at the King Bar uh, last last Saturday and turns Tell out Tell Crazy K I said what's up What's up Crazy mm-hmm. K <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy. You, like, What's up What's up How you doing out there um, Yeah he was up there DJing that oh, night yeah, That's and, my boy And you know I, I decided I was going to put my whole little outfit together I had my, my bomb lace front My blonde wig on there Marilyn I wrote it And I got out there And next thing you know The person was like Hey we're going to put you with the VIPs I was like See that's what I'm talking about right there Of course you're going to put me with the VIPs <laughs> I know because, I know that <laughs> no, no No I mean I always get in these doors That are weird Because it's just The door will open up for me mm-hmm. So if I put myself in the right place at mm-hmm. the right time, you're, it's just a matter of time for you make those contacts that absolutely. will support your process. And so, yeah, absolutely. Now what I mean, can and change your life. We, we, we talked about a few times on, on this show about building relationships, networking. I mean, that is so important. You know, everybody wanted to stay in the house and like people are not going to just call you and say, mm-hmm. Hey, come do this gig. If they don't know you, like mm-hmm. how, that's not even possible. Or you open up your business and you yeah. say, to come to your doors and yeah. you don't network. You don't, 
get out there and also support your community. Right. Like it's not, it's that's not really happen. hard. So that's yeah. very important to get out there and network. And that's why I was happy to see you at cocktails and convo. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You came out uh, and had a great time. I mean, I had a great time. I met a lot of people. Good. Yeah. We, I met a lot of new people. I was like, yes, this is amazing. Cause they're, right. you know, usually a lot of times the same people that come, which is fine. I love it. It's like a reunion. But like when you get to meet new people, it's even better. I like is that everybody's position was somebody that I can call on mm -hmm. and could be in mm -hmm. my vision, mm -hmm. which was like like uh, Amanda with the who does the uh, balloon decorations. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I was like her work is beautiful, yeah. great, thank you. I'm gonna need that, and when I'm when I'm ready to put my functions together, I already got my balloon purse, my decor. Mm -hmm. um, when mm -hmm. it comes to the DJs, I got several DJs. I mean, it's like right now I have access to the people that I need from event planning. You, Diana, and you might just go in over there and just have an expertise with so many different things. I'm like, great, this is all coming together. I see it, I, I see the vision is getting closer and mm -hmm. closer. So I just want to give you all a big shout out and thank you for thank that, you. guys. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. And uh, we are out of time, <laughs> but this was a great show. Uh, I got to say, um, I definitely want you to come back cool. and do another show because I want to get more into talking about the hypnotist. Is it hypnotist or... Don't, you know what? Don't ask me because oh, I'm going to butcher. Come on, Diana, you supposed to help me Hypnotism. out. Hypnotism. Hypnotism. Yeah, like I want to talk more about that and getting deeper into those type of conversations because I feel like you're very knowledgeable in that. Those are the conversations. You're bring the that, hypnotist here too. You can bring both of them. No, I think I, you might like that. But I, I think you know because we are in the community, we are an inspiring people, and I think those are the conversations that you know a lot of people need to hear. And how you were saying in the beginning of the show, you hope your story helps somebody. Well, it is because even though it's going to be on, you know. Uh, on any platform you listen to your podcast on the one like podcast y'all uh, but you never know who's going to listen to this mm -hmm. like we just did a show today but someone can listen to it next year mm -hmm. five years from now right and somebody might all get something out world. of it yeah all the world so it's mm -hmm. going to be great like so these these stories and conversations we ne definitely need to have and that's why diane and i are doing this can i plug myself absolutely of course all right you guys follow me on instagram at la.latifa.la I look forward to hearing all from you all. If you got any ideas or if you have any feedback on what I said today, and you want me to apologize, I will not be doing any apologizing. <laughs> but I'm just letting you know. We keep it 100. I, <laughs> I appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to uh, interacting with everybody. Out there. Hey, I love it. You know, we was going to let you do that after I did my intro thing, my outro thing. Though. Okay, my bad. You got you kind of like. But I'm not my jumped bad. Jumped the gun there. She's not apologizing. You I'm not jumped the gun. But yeah, anyway, you guys, so. <laughs> the hustler in her. See? She, she already taken over the show. Oh she needs her own show now. Oh <laughs> but yeah, no, you know what? Let's talk about it. If you guys are ever feeling down, you ever need somebody to talk to, you want to vent, you just if you want to be on the show, if you got a story to tell, if you want to talk about whatever, you want to give a shout out to somebody, you want to call in, hit us up at 747-999-8021. Again, 747-999-8021. Or hit us up on IG. Follow us on IG. Mine is One Life Brand. Diana's is Socialholic TV, you guys. Ooh. And you already heard from Latifa, <laughs> the La queen, Latifa La. the <laughs> queen Latifa. This is our queen Latifa. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna see you tonight at Zelda's. Yeah, seven eleven. See you. And that's there. every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night. Seven to eleven at Zelda's, 11. you guys. Well, thank you again. We appreciate you. Thank you. See you guys. Hey, that was perfect timing. The music went out. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Everyone has a unique gift, and Mike and Diana, host of the One Life podcast, believe that most people don't know how to use their gifts or what they are. Mike and Diana want you to see things from a different perspective and be true to yourself. The One Life podcast unites the world through art, fashion, music, and film. It inspires, motivates, and creates positive energy, love, and compassion to all communities and creates an equal playing field for all. On the One Life podcast, they cover topics like building relationships, overcoming adversity, habits of healthy people, and much, much more. We only have one life to live. Be yourself and live your truth. Add the One Life Podcast to your playlist. That's the number one in e-life. Available on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. 